What's up, Pocket Dudes? Welcome to Pokemon Go to the Movies, the podcast where we watch every theatrical Pokemon film. I'm your host, Dan Video Games, and with me is Bob. Hey, guys. From Giga Boots. Chris Wolfhard. Hello. Dr. Agro. Salutations. And Shibi Agato. Stantler! Stantler! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the funniest shit! <laughs> the forest is kind of terrifying. There's Stantlers everywhere. They just keep yelling. If you hear the voice of the forest, don't do shit. The voice of the forest is a grown man pretending he's a Stantler. That, that is my theory. Uh, yes. <laughs> You expect the voice of the forest to be this mystical kind of wispy voice instead it's Stantler. <laughs> Stantler. Let me tell you, if, if, if a woman tells you like, hey, if you go into the woods and you hear a weird voice, stand completely still. Yeah, no, there's a child abductor in those woods and she is his partner. <laughs> no. Uh, but yes, that's right. We watched the fourth movie, Pokemon Forever Dash. Celebi colon voice of the forest as it's known in America or as it's known in Japan pocket monsters the movie Celebi a timeless encounter see we like to focus on different things the Japanese on the fact there's time travel and America on where it's 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 all going to be this forest kid settle in if you haven't watched this show before what we do is we at first recap the movie talking about small uh things we noticed and interesting stuff about it uh then we move on to rank it and do all sorts of other stats like uh who's the most valued pokemon is ash and Akoma, and etc and uh then you stop listening and go to patreon.com slash gb podcast to get the next episode early Anyways, let's get into the recap. We open on Celebi flying through the forest like it's the shot from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. We're on the forest moon of Endor, and uh, he's being hunted by Houndoom and Scyther. It's very epic. Yeah, this is a very weird-looking CG forest they put Celebi in, but it's impressive, too. I I Mm. just want to make that clear. Is it? (laughs) It's, It's... You know, after the last two films, I'm not sure that I would call it impressive. It's no uh, castle made of crystal or anything like that. Uh, No. But it is uh, one of the more impressive shots in this film. Uh, We cut away from that event to this child walking up to a uh, short cave, like carved in the side of a giant uh, fallen tree. And a woman approaches them saying, hey, if you hear the voice of the forest, don't move a muscle. Uh, that sound means the, the forest guardian is time traveling. It's one of its <laughs> special powers. The forest spirit has a lot of powers. <laughs> <laughs> if you move, the spirit could carry you off to a different time. Anyways, here, have this nasty sandwich I made. Yeah, it just looks like dirty bread. <laughs> it just looks like dirty bread. It's it's, pr- it's dirty bread and wilted lettuce. And wilted <laughs> What a great sense. It's, it's, it's like here, here's uh here's here's a sandwich full of calorie free peanut butter. <laughs> oh, oh god, the salsa it's, fucking taste will never leave me. It's all natural. <sighs> so is the sweet release of death. <laughs> yeah. We get a shot of a ferret. A uh, motorcycle dude starts pulling up to the Celebi, and uh, Celebi's been, been down slightly. Apparently, he's the trainer of the Hound Doom and the Scyther, which is you know, good picks, honestly. This guy has pretty good taste. And yeah, this may be the raddest trainer I've ever seen. He's like, what's up? I'm a badass. And I'm like, yeah, I believe it. You're pulling it off pretty well right now. Anyone who uh, is able to get the one up on you is clearly even more badass. Uh, there's a Blossom. I'm already loving the representation in this one. Good showcase. <laughs> the kid comes ac- uh, across uh, this motorcyclist and uh, Celebi in that encounter. He goes, hey, two against one isn't fair. And Houndoom just shoots a flame at the kid. Yes. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you could train Pokemon to just <laughs> There's no humans. laws of robotics when it comes to Pokemon. They can't, in fact, harm children. I feel like this guy <laughs> probably just trained his Pokemon to be like, all right, if you see a kid, it is on site. I am not dealing with children. <laughs> this is this is old school. He's not dark type. He's evil. <laughs> this dude just showed up and I'm like, Kano? Because <laughs> he has a fucking cyber eye. <laughs> yeah, his his weird eye thing is interesting. I was waiting for him to battle and go, I know all of your moves. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ash snaps his neck. <laughs> he would. 
while Houndoom's distracted by wanting to murder children, Celebi is like, hey, I can just wrap them in vines and just use it as an ability to bind them to the ground. Some sort of move that might be named something. I don't know. <laughs> and as as the uh, the Houndoom and the Scyther get like bound to the ground, uh, the kid starts running off with Celebi. And he's cradling it, and the biker shows up and says, I'm a Pokemon hunter, kid. I'm ca I'm catching Pokemon. Yabba dabba dabba is basically the monologue he gives. They start running. Celebi yells. A blue wave envelops the forest. The kid gets taken by Celebi through the portal to somewhere. We zoom out. The forest is now a picture or a painting unclear because of the art style. And all I could think of is, and it's missed now. This is in a book. <laughs> <laughs> this is all on the island we kind of brushed over but this is villain two with some weird non-standard way of catching pokemon which doesn't seem more effective than regular pokeball he's like i'm a pokemon hunter yeah man who ain't <laughs> no i'm different you're really not i well no what makes him different is he hurts kids <laughs> <laughs> so child murderer is is the yes. title Y yeah, but we have to have a different name in the Pokemon universe. Oh, God, it would have been so good to just be like, in the games, child murderer has challenged you. <laughs> yeah, see, see it, normal Pokemon trainers can only hurt children if they make eye contact first. <laughs> Ooh. That, that is a competitive advantage for this guy. Uh, but as we, as we zoom out of this uh, painting slash picture... Uh, it, it pans over. The hunter is now old, and his Pokemon are just hanging out in there. He's getting roughed up by a guy with an R on his shirt. There's a Sneasel. That's cool. Yeah, I like Sneasel. Sneasel's fun. The, this guy roughing up the uh, former badass, thus asserting himself as the real badass of this film, <laughs> pulls out a thing that is a dark ball. <laughs> God, even they haven't beat up this guy, but the dude's like old now, so it just feels mean. Yeah, it's like it's like I'm the badass. I beat up this eighty year old man. Well, it's okay because he was about to beat up this child. So this is the comeuppance that has been how many years in the making? Like fifty. <laughs> what, what, what is this every, days every, gone rule? Every new villain will slightly one up the last one in the lamest way possible. We get for it. It's like I ate half of this cake and then returned it to Walmart. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this one's even more evil than the last three. Uh, but he explains with the Dark Ball, he's like, the Pokemon I catch with the Dark Ball become evil Pokemon. Come out, Tyranitar, okay, who is Okay, let's, let's so stop right here. Now. What's up? <laughs> where did he get that? <laughs> it, it It is a one-shot capture mm -hmm. that mind dominates Pokemon. Yes. It also maxes out their level. And it changes the saturation value because I swear Tyranitar is more saturated than normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that is yes, correct. Yes, it is. Well, it's depressed and sad and malnourished before it goes into the Dark Ball, and then it gets fucked up and nourished <laughs> and evil. <laughs> Why the fuck is he doing this as a job? He should be running the world. He's using this tech wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he also had, he, like, this is a little bit later, but he also has the fucking He-Man battle vehicle. <laughs> right? He does, yes. I saw it and I was like, yeah, I owned that when I was six. As he does this, and Tyranitar is totally awesome and wrecks things, so uh, which awesome. makes it evil now, even though I'm convinced it would always just wreck everything like this. We get the CG intro. Pokemon forever. Celebi, the voice of the forest. This is where I have to admit, we watched the uh, little short in America that plays before the movie. Um, I believe it was called, yes, Pikachu the movie for some reason. And all it was was it going, hey, the anime is a thing. Maybe watch it. <laughs> uh, we get uh, the narrator, the classic Pokemon narrator here, and it has a really bad flanger sound applied to it in the US dub, just like Brock was in that uh, intro anime thing. Uh, there's a crowbat and a crocodile and a Pikachu and a crocodile on screen, and this is the actual important part of this recap. <laughs> but yeah, basically, this is a, a small vignette part of the movie where they're at a seaside or lakeside town, and uh, Ash, uh, Brock and Misty are just waiting on Ash. It's like, oh, we gotta go. Where's Ash? He sends off uh, Crowbat to go get Ash. Ash is having a cool battle against the crocodile with a local trainer. It's very cool, very, very small, like, I don't know, uh, stereotypically French or Italian town? I don't know. Just reminds me of the opening of the Tim and Eric movie. 
expect Diamond Jim to come walking out any minute now. I really like this intro. It's very upbeat. We get a remix of the opening theme of the anime. And as Crobat comes up, it just starts grimacing like uh, Kanamori from Azoken at Ash. Oh my god, yes, it does. Oh. I mean, that is that is just Crobat's face always. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, doesn't, like, make a sound, doesn't, like, do anything to communicate, just makes that face at Ash. He instantly goes, oh my god, that's right, I need to go. So he runs out of the battle abruptly to try to catch the boat. So, sorry, Xenoblade character. I can't continue battling you. <laughs> yeah, the accent that VA put on for this kid is like the weirdest shit. I already forget <laughs> if it was like bad Australian. It or... was just super British. I'm I'm drowning in Xenoblade right now, so it didn't even phase me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's just how people sound. <laughs> yeah, that's just how people sound now, I guess. He just screamed, Alu, Alu, <laughs> yes. and then the Pokemon uh, remix just completely covered up his voice. He actually. saw he saw a shiny and he went, that's a rare dude all right here. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they need to catch the boat before it leaves. Brock and Misty are on it and just like, come on, Ash. And this trolley car of like luggage carriers or whatever just pulls in front of Ash. And he just does the I'm running, but in place animation as he looks to the left and the right and just starts freaking out. He runs up to the dock. He makes a leap for the boat and they try to grab his hand. He He's not going to make it. And then some random guy on the boat grabs Ash's hand and is like, hey, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I was surprised this intro doesn't have much of a fight like the other ones did, where Ash fights a trainer. This is mostly Ash running through city trying to catch the boat. I kind of really like that, though, because yeah. it's yeah. like left to his own devices, Ash will just be fighting around the world. He is fucking <laughs> stupid and also 10, so this is absolutely a plausible <laughs> thing that can and uh, will happen to him. Mm -hmm. He's just going to get left behind. It's, we're going to get the Pokemon equivalent of Home Alone if he's left to his own devices. If none of these are Pokemon Home Alone at any point, I'm going to be so upset. I feel like that's such a good premise. <laughs> Team Rocket's trying to, trying to get into his house to steal Pikachu. <laughs> and instead of using Pokemon to battle him, he for some reason pulls out maiming traps. What if it was just Pikachu? What if even Ash wasn't there? Like, why isn't that one of the fucking Pikachu's vacation shorts? Just Pikachu defending their <laughs> hotel room from Team Rocket and setting up comical fucking traps? That would be really good. We're really going to get Pikachu this time, and then Pikachu has a nail gun. <laughs> No, Pikachu has just, just an actual shotgun. In the English version, oh, he really nailed us that time, Japanese version. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> so Ash just barely gets under the boat. They're riding to their next destination. That's when they look over. And in the meadow, with, as the trees separate, they see Suicune just staring at them like, <laughs> what's up? And I'm like, is this a Harry Potter film? Will this come in at the end? And it wasn't Suicune at all. It was them pretending to be Suicune, saving themselves via time travel. Because I know this movie involves time travel from the title. Uh, but they make it to the next town. They get in on FaceTime call with Oak, and Oak's just like, is is this the Pokemon you saw? I commissioned this art of it. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was him. That's Suicune. He's, he's really cool, right? Oak explains, according to Folktale, it has the power to purify tainted waters. And he goes, those tales are definitely true. And Ash is just like, wow, how did you know that? And then, and then, and then, and then, and then he's like, have you ever seen a Shuikun? And it just sort of, the phone call sort of ends there. In the Japanese version, uh, Grimer just starts basically eating Oak, and the call ends that way. Oh, That's so funny. <laughs> that is pretty good. As it oh. just starts slowly enveloping and crushing him that by happened, leaning like, on all him. the time in the, in the show. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't they keep that? That was a running gag. This is, in a, spoilers for later in this film, this is one of the things they, they mildly rewrite between Japan and America, because America's like, the kid Kids won't get it. The kids won't get it. We have to rewrite this and insert a second phone call at the end with the same footage to drive in. Hey, it was him. It was him all along. <laughs> oh. See, see, and I didn't I didn't even realize that because I was just it, it never occurred to me that this child could be someone. <laughs> That's fair. Uh I knew about this. I don't know if somebody brought it up on Pokemon Days, just idly, that there's some inserted plot about that 
but but I knew about this. The thing that really tricked me off to uh, there has to be a difference between Japan and and uh, America on this phone call is um th- th- the second phone call looks terrible. <laughs> like I don't know if it just got worse through generational decay or something, but it just looked worse. So I had to go check afterward. They they should have included a shot of like Gary Oak fading from a photograph, like Back to the Future. <laughs> yes. And he doesn't and he doesn't come back until the kid goes back and back to his original time. <laughs> that would be really funny. I mean, Oak is just his uncle, so <laughs> but that's confusing. Still be funny. Isn't he? Is no? He's no. He's Gary's grandfather. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gary I, explicitly calls him Gramps. Okay. But he calls everyone Gramps. And, and even this is better than the alternative that it was that it could have been Tracy sketch it and then it would end Tracy Tracy you're like 46 years old and he's like gotta go <laughs> and you hear sirens in the background when, when he's drawing Pikachu sleeping he's just like wow you're really sketching it huh and he's like that's my name don't wear it out I mean what <laughs> I thought you were implying uh, Chris that uh, Tracy sketch it would disappear from the timeline and everyone's like eh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fix anything. He remains disappeared from the timeline forever. Unfortunately, Tracy remains. Yes, regrettably. Uh, in Japanese, the phone call ends with uh, Oak saying a-, a haiku, basically a poem about Suikun and how cool he is. And the moment he finishes, he's like, it's a pretty good poem, right? And that's when Grimer or Muck just starts enveloping him. And he's like, no, no, God. I think that's way better comedically i enjoyed the heck out of that anyways we set up the deus ex machina we set up the chekhov's gun rather so we have to move on ash is called over by the new guy uh th- we cut to oak now that the phone call has ended just sitting there and being like oh should i have told him that one other thing oh, i don't know whatever they're back on a speedboat we're traveling through the forest we got togepi dancing that's what everyone wants finally uh team rocket is on a hang glider uh bike question mark <laughs> yeah. do we have a word for it's that a, sort of thing i i guess it's like a gyrocopter that's pedal controlled right i want to call it that but i i'm not sure that's a real thing i think video games taught me that i'm it, not it, I it, assume. It, it's a pedal powered fly a jig oh okay thank you for your very scientific name Dr. man they Agra. sure they they sure seem to have a problem with getting vehicles that aren't powered by them pedaling because they, they had one in the, they had one in, i think in both previous movies look yeah they they had the pedal powered magikarp sub the the duran show gang dna infected them too hard they can't stop it look gasoline is very expensive in the pokemon universe because people keep bringing fossils back to life Ah, that that makes sense actually Dude, if they just like popped open the hood of some vehicle in the pokemon universe and there's just like a voltorb chilling in the in like the compartment it's like no we we just do this I, you know i'm surprised that that didn't come up in the sun moon anime that thing does weird enough stuff that you'd think it would have happened where are the rotom cars <laughs> you open we the hood ready. <laughs> you open the hood and it's basically like a giant microsoft surface like the entire engine is that and it's smiling up at you <laughs> rotom's like hey what's up i don't Ooh. want a rotom self-driving car that is not safe <laughs> no he won't self-drive he'll just be like you want directions okay here's where i want to go idiot i mean to be fair if i opened my hood and i saw that toothy smile coming back at me i'd be like yeah my car's ready to hit children <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> Uh, yeah, Team Rocket probably shouldn't constantly drive vehicles that the safety of depends on them not being stricken by ADD. Because <laughs> uh, as they're pedaling through midair, Jesse's just like, oh, I'm tired. I'm, I'm done pedaling. And they're like, no, we're going to die. <laughs> and they start dropping like a rock. They start swaying back and forth like a relief. And then it, completely unrelated, <laughs> a giant gust of wind blows them off into the distance. <laughs> incredible like, oh they were they were just doomed anyways this literally had nothing to do with them stopping pedaling well well they got a little bit too close to ash so like the psychic force that's protecting his coma dream blew them away <laughs> this at field knocked them off uh the speedboat carries to the end uh there's a waterfall and they're at the bottom of it looking up uh, and they get cool flotation pods on the side of it to lift them up into the air and carry them in. And 
they, they see a village up ahead. So they walk in and there's some old lady and it's really obviously the person from the intro who's like, hey, if you hear a voice, don't move. Uh, <laughs> she's old now and has a hoot hoot cane, which is a nice touch. I like that cane a lot. I just think it's very funny. I, I think it's just neat. <laughs> for, for a second, I thought this was secretly a Gen 3 movie because Gen 3 has that town I know. of all tree, all tree houses. I did the same thing and I'm like having a stroke and Bob's like, what? <laughs> what place? <laughs> and I'm like, I swear to God, this is, they just took the thing from Gen 3, renamed it and went, this is original to this film. That's how anime <laughs> movies are, baby. <laughs> Oh, we are going to get into what this movie stole from in a minute. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, I wonder if Gen 3 Development looked at this movie and said, that, we want that. Uh, we, we, the old lady, you know, her young daughter is there, and so is Brock, unfortunately for her. We have hit the Brock percent run. It is complete. You can stop watching the movie. He has to, he has to run his bit where he's like, my name's Brock, but you can call me your boyfriend. <laughs> Fortunately, Misty is here to immediately shut him down and ensure that he never uh, gets to harass women. Let's let's be clear about something, and I think this is the worst it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Diana is only in this movie so Brock can do his bit. Yep. Yeah, she does vanish yes. immediately after. Explicitly, so he can do his bit. This is like <laughs> the most we're saving for winter Pokemon movie yet. It's like, how many locations we have? One. How many characters do we have? Five. <laughs> I was expecting some sort of bit when uh, Sam gets back to the present where he gets some confused, at least. But we don't even get that. <laughs> yeah, we don't get a lot of things you would expect from Sam, but we'll get into that in a moment. <laughs> They're like, oh, uh, wait, there's... There's adventure up ahead. Okay, we're go we're Ash just wants to go have an adventure, so we're gonna we're gonna run into the forest. They run through the exact same cave we saw from the opening, but of course they're running in the other direction, presumably. We then get a shot of a bunch of Pokemon. We get Ladybug. We get Hoot Hoot. We get Heracross. My neurons are activating. This this film is doing exactly what it needs to yep. to help supplement the plot. <laughs> Imagine a peanut butter sandwich, but the bread is literally paper thin. And they're just like, here's here's some delicious peanut butter. You like Lady Bot? I'm like, I, I do. Thank you. Uh, at a certain point in this movie, watching it, there became more Pokemon in second gen exclusives in this movie than there were in our playthrough of Soul Silver. <laughs> Jesus. Not that that's a high bar. They hide them really good. Yeah, the amount of... Uh, isn't this in the game? Where's that? Uh, so you have to beat the Elite Four, and then it unlocks on this one road. <laughs> like, come on, man, what? <laughs> They're like, oh, man, wait a second. We, we, we have some crazy effects going on. I wonder what that's about. Oh, it's probably the voice of the forest. And then Ash what runs off again. the first thing Ash does? He runs off. He starts running. He starts moving as much as he can because <laughs> he's really good at listening. I like the Brock even yells at him like, hey, weren't we not supposed to move? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the waves fly out of the shrine uh, before, which is where Celebi chose to time travel, was right in front of this very, very tiny shrine. And out of the waves comes Celebi dumping this child's body in front of it and then slinking off behind this tiny shrine to just be like, <laughs> Celebi massively hungover just sort of goes away and, uh, uh, our main cast finds the child passed out. It's just like, oh my God, this child, we need to figure out what its deal is. So they run the child back to the city that are like, hey, what's up? We we got this thing. Um, do you know who this child is? Uh, and before they could even have this conversation properly, this child, which I will stop calling that, his name's Sam, uh, pushes Ash and Ash is like, oh, okay, I'm ready to beat you to death. <laughs> yeah, there's like zero <laughs> seconds here. Ash is really, like, fucking ready to throw hands in this movie. He is go time, 100%, all the time. <laughs> you shoved me, so that, that justifies anything I do from this point <laughs> forward, is right? how some part of Ash's brain functions. Ash, you found him unconscious in the woods. <laughs> I didn't know Ash was a stand your ground kind of guy. <laughs> oh, the old lady's God. overjoyed. This is the child from all those years ago. Her her daughter or whatever is just like, what? That but that's that was 40 years ago. And then and then the kid goes, 
you're the girl who gave me that loaf of bread. That's incredible. What an amazing moment we're having here. Then there's plot stuff. Genuinely nothing important being shown, but he does get handed the sketchbook. This will be important. Light starts flashing. <laughs> uh, and then what was the toy set? A He-Man action vehicle? Yeah, he, he, he's riding Spy Door from the old <laughs> Masters oh of the Universe cartoon. Jesus. It starts crawling its way through the city with the man we come to be known as the Iron Mask Marauder. Ugh. Or city, a uh, forest rather. And Stantler's there just going, Stantler, Stan, Stantler. And I'm losing it. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, man. Uh, as they realize, you know, Sam was dumped off in the future by Celebi, they're like, well, I wonder if Celebi's hurt. We need to see if we can find him, says Sam. And it's like, Sam, that's your priorities. You jumped 40 years into the future and you're not worried about your family or anything else but celibate look i have known broccoli mew for five minutes and if anything happened to it i will kill everyone in this room and <laughs> myself i'm sorry that's green onion mew <laughs> canonically that is a green onion mew leak mew <laughs> they start wandering through the forest trying to find where celibate is and as they look up on top of this giant fallen tree they see a tiny hole and all these Pokemon gathering around, and they're like, oh, well, that's got to be, you know, Celebi, because this is a nativity scene, and all these animals have gathered for Celebi here. Let's climb this tree, and we'll figure it out. Sam tries to climb after Ash, and Ash is like, well, hey, not everyone's as cracked out as me, my friend. You need to take it easy. You were just harmed. I, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> immortal, of course. I'm a certified mountain climber. Yes. Uh, they climb up. Celebi's just hanging out, lying down in this hole, just being like, oh, I'm in pain. They're like, hey, don't worry. I'm just going to reach towards your face, wild animal. You will react well to this. <laughs> Celebi sends out the shock, psychic wave to knock them off. Ash seems pretty pissed over this. Like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to kick your ass, too. <laughs> Starts climbing up at mock speeds. And they're like, hey, 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 Celebi's just scared. Oh, and they're like, OK, well, we'll just talk to him. So as they try to <laughs> diplomatically talk to Celebi, it keeps whipping them with vines. CG vine whip. Yes. It's so good. It's just the funniest looking thing. It looks like it could have been added in. It just... And the sound design and everything else about it, just the fact they're taking these hits so well. And they're just like, calm down. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, all right. And then it calms down, finally. <laughs> Favorite part of this encounter I skimmed over, however, Pikachu was definitely going to kill it, but got talked down for violence. <laughs> yeah, Pikachu <laughs> yes. was literally about to Thunderbolt, and then this child has to go, it was attacked by a fucking poacher. Goddamn. Relax. <laughs> 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 uh, I've been trying to find a good time to noted and i don't think there is going to be one mm -hmm. sam is voiced by mokuba from Yu-Gi-Oh. so this is total <laughs> whiplash for me uh, <laughs> well uh the iron mask marauders dan green i yeah it took me a bit to notice that that was dan green but uh it's very funny <laughs> i'm surprised that they sounded so similar i thought ash was the same voice actress sam that's that's also what i thought especially because of the opening I when he's just making the same Mokuba's oh! voice because Sounds this is the good Mokuba voice the and not the bad one from season four and five um <laughs> also also uh veronica taylor ash's va is voicing the old lady in the village so she's doing double duty just not for this case yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Almost always. <laughs> Ash's mom yeah. wasn't in this one, so she's got to voice someone else. Uh, as they make their way out of the forest with uh, Celebi being cradled like a Cella baby, uh, they, they encounter Team Rocket, unfortunately for them. Uh, they're hanging out on this tree branch and they start doing their rocket schlocket. Wabafet shows up and it's like, hey, what's up, bitches? It's second gen. I'm going to consistently ruin everything for you already unlucky saps. Uh, cracks the uh, tree branch and they all come plummeting to the ground. I fucking love Wabafet. Wabafet is really good. It's a it's it's a fantastic Pokemon that salutes while it screams its own name. <laughs> yes, I, I love that scene because the, the whole team like just walks by Team Rocket and Misty's like, it's OK. They'll unfortunately be fine. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, they walk up on Spy Door in the Iron Mask Marauder, <laughs> and uh, he goes, "I've been looking for the Celebi," and they go, "Who are you?" And he goes, "A Pokemon lover." <laughs> <laughs> 
is uh, very, very fantastic. His mech is so awesome, so obviously evil. So these are the power scales. We have Pokemon Hunter and then Pokemon Lover. Oh. Mm. I mean, love is the most powerful thing of all, Bob. <laughs> love We're wins. forgetting this. Except for Hyper Beam. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Speaking of which, Tyranitar comes out of the Dark Ball and uses Hyper Beam. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, at one point, uh, J- uh, J- James pulled out his wheezing and is just like, oh, um, yeah, wheezing shootout gas. This seems like a good <laughs> <Gas>! time. <laughs> yeah, that's what James said. He got really close to the mic and just said, gas. Th- this villain plays Pokemon the way, like, eight-year-old me played Gen 1 or so like, just use Hyper Beam. Just keep using it. Never stop using high <laughs> clear and move. Mass if it comes broke. up on them. They're like, wait a minute, he has an R on a shirt. Wait a minute, we're Team Rocket too. Isn't that great? We're all just on the same team. Uh, specifically, they go the, talking to the Iron Mask Marauder. Team Rocket says, as you can tell by our uniforms, we're also Team Rocket members, except for Meowth, who goes, me too, but we Pokemon get to go naked. <laughs> I really love that moment. Iron Mask Marauder pulls out two other Pokemon. It is uh, Sneasel and Scizor, also juiced up by the Dark Ball. And they're going to pursue our main cast, who are just booking it. Like, after after the wheezing shot out the gas, they're like, this is a good time, but let's, let's, just, let's just leave. Okay, right here. This is where this movie unequivocally turns into Princess Mononoke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh... Yeah, it does that a bit, for sure. Yeah. I've never seen it. Oh, my God. Honestly, I haven't either. Oh, my God. Wow. So, so, okay, what exactly happens here that causes that? So they run over the huge stone run mm-hmm. through the woods, and yeah. then they get to the lake, right? Uh, they're, they're not quite at the lake yet. They're having this battle on these rocks and stuff, but they do eventually oh, get right. there. Yeah, yeah. The lake's where it picks up again. Okay, so, so Sam pulls out his... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. He has like a bottle cap valve on his Pokeball. It's a steampunk Pokeball. That's what I would think. It's an old timey Pokeball. Yeah. I like that now that we know Arceus and Uh how actual super old Pokeballs are. It's like, man, things advanced, de-advanced and then re-advanced real quick. I think these are a th- I think these are a thing you can get in Gen 2. Are these apricot balls? Though? Yeah, I think that's what it's supposed to be. Here's the thing, Bob. As somebody who lived through the 2010s in cinema, are you going to be surprised by technology advancing, regressing violently, and then advancing again? Yeah, no, not at all. Cinema technology has been hilarious ever since digital video took over. Uh, We're finally back at parody with film. That took way too long. Uh, Anyway, Sam pulls out Charmeleon. And I'm like, oh man, that's great. We don't we don't get to see Charmeleon all that often, I don't feel. And then uh Ash goes, Hey, what what about Bayleaf? That's a good Pokemon. So we get this battle between Scizor or Scizor and Bayleaf. I, I think Charmeleon that, and Sneasel. It's neat that Caesar is here, because I assume that this is a stolen Scizor from the Pokemon Hunter. So this is like a 40-year-old Caesar. <laughs> I don't think so, because the Scizor and the Sneasel we're sort of like standing in the back while this guy was stealing that man's Tyranitar. I thought that just, I thought just the Sneasel was in that we didn't see a Caesar till here. I, I think they're both there. Okay, I think they're both okay. just standing there being like, hmm, hmm, I think they're hmm. just sort of like mugging for the camera. Right. At that yeah. Point. They don't do anything. Uh, we have a battle. Uh, the battle concludes and uh, apparently they tied Scizor and Sneasel to a rock and ran. <laughs> that just seems weird. Look, they're not going to kill Pokemon. <laughs> yes, but this seems like a comical way to restrain them. Like, like it's a very old comedic shot, like from ancient We've cinema. We've seen Pokemon faint before. I don't know why they wouldn't just like knock them out. They're like, least. we have to restrain them. They're too powerful because of the dark balls. Yeah, maybe they can't fall. They can't be knocked out because they've been dark balled. Oh man, that's like one of those. Uh, like, it, okay, I'll I'll just Shaolin soccer. It's like Shaolin soccer. They have the American <laughs> drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's in the dark ball. We yes. we know now. Main cast is wandering further into the forest. It starts getting foggy, and that's when we get Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring. Boom! Right there. They're like, uh, um, I think they want to guide us. Maybe let's follow this fucking bear. And they so, follow back to its cave, and he eats them. I'm like, damn! I can't believe this keeps working. <laughs> <laughs> 
if only if only they had just not moved in the first place when they heard the voices the forest then they would have been fine as long as children believe in magic our bellies will be full <laughs> The bears clock out. Stantler clocks in, starts guiding them further into the forest. Stantler clocks out. Furret clocks in, starts guiding them further into the forest. And then they come up upon the lake where apparently this is a Ghibli film. This is shot for shot. The scene from Princess Mononoke. I do not doubt this for one second. Just to be clear. (laughs) Yeah, that just, of course. Celebi is looking real rough. Still being held like baby. Sam's like, okay, I'm just going to walk into the water and then just sort of soak you a little bit. (laughs) I'm just going to get some of these nutrients and hydration in here. (laughs) There is a giant wide shot of all these Pokemon very excited for the Celebi to get saturated for some reason. Celebi falls into the water. His body just drifts off and he looks upward towards the sun. And as he goes to the shell. (laughs) <laughs> as he soaks in the rays he starts glowing green and now the entire lake is lit up with a green energy and celebi's like hey i'm 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 at full power now i'm gonna fly around we're gonna have some fun i'm gonna dunk ash's hat it's gonna be funny everyone loves that i'm just here i am broccoli view everyone loves me i'm the baby and, and it, this is the scene and it just continues to be this scene for a bit it is uh possibly whimsical we'll find out later <laughs> this uh this whole expanse here where they're totoroing it up with celebi mm-hmm. uh is is where my theory about who who sam was uh came to the forefront i thought we were gonna pull a you know sam is a girl's name too by the end of this movie so so then he was gonna be oh nobody in particular i thought, oh, okay. I thought he was gonna go in for the kiss uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, see, I was thinking like, so what? He'll 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 yell that Sam's a man's name and he's a man and start <laughs> oh and start God. a war. <laughs> Could you imagine Ash had any Camille energy at all? Could you imagine anyone in Pokemon had Camille energy? Jesus, uh, Celebi gives him the power of flight. You know, just does that. Uh, taps Mis- Misty's knee, which I didn't mention it earlier. Misty kind of like tripped on a rock and kind of hurt her leg a little bit. But now it's all better. Thank you, Celebi. We're going to fly around. It's going to be whimsical. Everything's going to be fun. Everyone loves it. They're a jump pluff on screen. Yeah. We now cut to a disparate <laughs> scene where they're like, hey, berries are new this gen. Look at these berries. We're going to all eat berries. Do you guys love berries? Very based and berry pilled. Yes. Uh, they have a great scene where they get to enjoy food, which means we have to cut to a sad scene where Team Rocket is like, oh, we haven't eaten anything forever. Oh, look at this peach looking thing. We should eat this. Uh, as they try to grab it, they get pulled off of s- the spider mech. And uh, a bird eats the thing they were trying to eat anyways. Shot of hoot hoot. Very important. In the nighttime scene around a campfire, Ash wakes up to find Sam uh, drawing in a sketchbook. My PTSD activates. (laughs) They're like, oh, this is is pretty good drawings. You draw all these Pokemon. And I'm like, please, please, another characteristic. Any other characteristic I would really enjoy for this new, (laughs) new quotations mark character to have. But Ash tells him about the Pokedex, and it gets us thinking, oh, he's he's designing Pokedex stuff. Oh, my God, this book. It's just like a Pokedex, but it's a book and paper. <laughs> yeah, as Bob was saying, uh, Ash compares Sam's book to his Pokedex. Sam says, Ash sure knows a lot about the future. Ash says, well, at least I'm not stuck in it like you are. And I'm like, yes, you are, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> you are, in fact, stuck in the future right now. Well, he's not stuck in his future like, he's not showing 40 years in the future. He's trying to relate to Sam here, okay? <laughs> no, he's not, actually. He's really making Sam feel like shit, actually. <laughs> yes, that is, this is not going well. Sam only now realizes his predicament and is sad. <laughs> Sam says he thinks he'll like living in the future, but he has to get used to it. Uh, no, uh, editors know he's only been in this forest. He has no idea what the outside world is like. Sam then worries about his mom. Ash, functioning on all levels, goes, thinking about my mom gets me thinking about her cooking. They eat the bread. (laughs) They swear it's good. (laughs) This line kills me. Okay. They they come up on some trees. They notice they're all glowing with metapods. They're like, oh, this is amazing. The metapods are like evolving into Butterfree fantastic what what an awesome thing and then they climb a tree and they watch the butterfree all going 
and I swear to God, I wish I was making this up. As the Butterfree are everywhere, Sam says, look at all the Butterfree. And Ash says, I hope you'll be free, Sam. <laughs> yeah, he sure did say that. This was- Tell me you didn't think they were going to kiss. <laughs> it's a Pokemon movie. There's no way. Dude, I kind of... I kind of thought they were. Uh, I, I mean, I did out loud say, "Man, Sam and Ash are just really good friends." <laughs> if if anything like that is going to happen in a Pokemon movie, it's going to be a a very like long drawn out hug, and then Ash is going to start blushing, and he'll be like, "If I didn't know any better, I'd almost say you liked me." And then there's just going to be dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ash would never kiss a person in a Pokemon movie. Um. <laughs> This is this is possibly the cut that is the funniest to me because you know they're, they're it's it's dawning they're on the branch they're watching all these butterfree we fade to black we fade back in they're now at the shrine because they could only rent three sets I guess <laughs> they're like okay all we have to do is now that Celebi's better we just dump them here and they go back in time and that's all fine Iron Mask Marauder comes out around the corner with this crazy mech and is just like ho ho ho. <laughs> They start screaming, oh no, and he, he he kidnaps Celebi. They scream, let Celebi go. He goes, stupid kids, and then birds attack him. <laughs> yeah, he just <laughs> mauled by Pidgeotto. It's, it's amazing. So it's the best scene in this movie by far. <laughs> the timing on it is perfect because it's not really brought to the fore of, yeah, he knocked down a couple of trees during this encounter already. That that has ramifications. Like, that never occurs to you. <laughs> but he kidnaps Celebi in his dark ball, which is truly fearsome. I can only imagine how strong Celebi must be now that it is evil. <laughs> Fucking Ash just scales this robot and goes to fist fight a grown man in a metal mask. Yeah. No. I love this kid. Yeah, he just, he just like, no, I'm just going to start punching you. Yeah, he doesn't bring Pokemon this time. It's not... <laughs> That's not what this movie's about. <laughs> he brought these hands and he's going to use them. And the great thing is he actually successfully wrestles the Celebi Dark Ball out of his hands, plummets to the ground and is just lying there holding it like, I did it. And then Iron Mask Marauder just stamps his foot down on Ash's arm and is like, let go, motherfucker. While Brock and Sam just stand there like piss ants. <laughs> yes. Uh, as he wrestles the Dark Ball away from Ash, all the Pokemon show up to judge him. <laughs> and slowly start closing in. We get just shot after shot of look at all these second gen Pokemon that are that have had enough of this shit. And the mildest sprinkling of like first gens in there. He goes, okay, well I've had enough of this. This is fine. And he uses the dark ball to unleash Celebi and Celebi's fearsome, now super powerful evil magic as it flies around with a sphere around it, causing mayhem and destruction. And it is just that's what psychic type is in these movies glow with the circle and fly and wreck shit yeah be be, be an a, be an a angel from ava <laughs> celebi starts forming the dr manhattan style house but instead it's with twigs instead of it forming out of the sand into a crystal palace uh this starts forming some sort of sphere around celebi in midair after all these pokemon were wrecked by it Everyone's freaked out. The old lady just starts noticing. And then we cut to a CG Suicune. <laughs> God, it looks so bad. It's like the CG on the... It's like the opening of a PS1 game. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's like late PS1 budget GameCube. That's how it feels. They sure did sell shade that thing. <laughs> it just needed to run at 15 frames a second and be like, four t it'd be like 144p to really sell it. So this weird sphere starts morphing into, I don't know how you describe this, Sawdust Kaiju? Uh, the curse rod at Greatwood from Dark Souls 3. What's that? The forest spirit turned into a giant bipedal monster? That's not like some other movie I know at all. Well, I mean... We certainly wouldn't just walk through the forest destroying it, though, Agro, would it? <laughs> oh, it's incredibly funny when Jesse gets sucked into the sphere. And, and it takes so long, and I almost expected, like, the little explosion when she got pulled fully in. <laughs> she is a Rocket member. You just expect immediate strong harm. Look, Agro. If you're looking for the dates, Princess Mononoke, Mononoke was 97. 97. There's no way they could have seen that film in the last four years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no mystery here, man. There's no way the, at the time, highest grossing movie in Japanese cinema history. <laughs> 
yeah, no way. Uh, yeah, as you know, Jesse gets absorbed into this shit and just uh, is, oh my god, wrapped up in vines inside of the kaiju. Uh, the Iron Mask Marauder is like just standing on the front of it as it walks through the forest, wrecking everything. And Jesse's like, anyway, I can report all this great progress you've made back to Giovanni and let him know and uh, recommend you for a promotion. And he goes, promotion. You're here to bear witness. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, oh, this 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 guy's motivations changed immediately. Uh, he is now super powerful. He has now realized he doesn't need to work for Giovanni if he's got this thing on his side. And I, I'd say that's pretty accurate. I, I mean, if, if I discovered I had God like power, killing my boss would be my first oh. <laughs> instinct. Yes. <laughs> my notes. It morphs. Iron Mask Marauder is into this, I guess. <laughs> because his voice delivery of just being like, oh, yes! They use the airship form of the speedboat from earlier in order to try to fly up and catch up to this kaiju. And our main cast is like, okay, we gotta reach out to it. Ash is just like, hey, Cel Celebi? Hey, buddy? How, how you doing in there? We get a cool inside shot. We're going to see a lot of times of Celebi looking a little over caffeinated. And then it just freaks out. Iron Mask Marauder's like, yeah, uh, I'm going to need you to kill them. So it just shoots two beams, immediately wrecks the airship. It goes down. Old lady, everyone just lying around completely wrecked by that. Pikachu's like, I got this. Uh, Thunderbolt? No. Okay. Well, at least we got Iron Mask Marauder to leap off of it. That's something and iron mask marauders just hanging out on a branch now just going hey uh celebi could you just like finish them off that would be great iron mask marauder as i said hanging out of this branch sui kun goes i'm gonna break that branch and watch this human fall to his death <laughs> just stunt on a bitch uh imm just lands perfectly fine he's just fine with that it is at this moment that i notice his dark balls are embedded in his vest very cool i honestly yeah. yes that's how I feel. I don't know how everyone else feels, but I think it's a very cool look. Yeah, I always love design outfit designs that have the six Pokeball slots somewhere on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're great. I do like that. Having landed on the ground, Ash and Sam are on the back of Suicune, and Iron Mask Marauder's like, well, I need to deal with that. Uh, throws out Tyranitar to use a Hyper Beam. Brock's like, I know what I should do. Hey, Onyx, can you, can you solve this problem, too? <laughs> I will do one thing in this movie, finally. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't go well for Onyx, but that's fine. Suicune leaps up on top of this kaiju, and they yet again just go, Hey, Celebi? Celebi, you doing all right? That doesn't work. Suicune drops to the ground. Onyx starts attacking uh, Tyranitar, uh, and then Suicune's like, Here, here, let me, please. Does a cool move, which uh, I, I don't even know what it is. It seems bubble beamy, but it is. it can't be. That would be absurd. Uh, but it does that. Tyranitar looks like it's kind of wrecked, and then Onyx just slaps it out onto the lake as its last bit of energy. The best tail whip in history. <laughs> yes, because it did anything other than attack, uh, modify a defense stat. Well, your defense can't be very high if you're dead. <laughs> if you're drowning in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> Brock is like, well, that's more than I could have expected out of Onyx from this film, so we're just going to retract that Onyx. Suicune rides up the kaiju again with Ash and Sam, and then v v Vine Tentacles grab the Suicune, wrap it up in midair, and starts shocking it with dark energy. Sam and Ash drop down, climb inside of the kaiju, and start talking to Celebi over and over again, getting shocked with dark energy. Celebi uh, does the I'm over-caffeinated and disassociating face five times across multiple cuts. And as the scene continues, all of the forest creatures just start screaming. And it's so funny. I don't know. There's something really delightful about... Like, we've talked about before. Some Pokemon are just the sound of human screaming. Yeah. When you get a whole cast of Pokemon to just come out and scream, that is always going to be funny. Mm. Ash and Sam continue climbing in. Celebi remembers the good times while still shooting dark energy out. They... Just keep talking to him. He's remembering the good times and uh, the tentacles disengage from Suicune dropping into the lake. And finally, Celebi stops disassociating, wakes up and is like, oh, OK, I'll stop. The kaiju falls apart. Our main cast flies out of there or Sam, Ash and Pikachu. Pikachu 
Pikachu's just there because it needs to be in the shots too. But anyway, they walk up from the lake. They're like, oh, oh, this Celebi's like going <laughs> bad like lettuce in a fridge. Yes. <laughs> this is this is this is dire. How long has this been in here? <laughs> The Iron Mask Marauder's Dark Ball uh, explodes, but it does not eviscerate him, which I was really hoping it would. I was hoping it would be like uh, Dragon Ball when Goku kicks the grenade back at Mercenary Tao and just deletes him from reality. Yeah, I assumed it would also couple something like that. Like, it explodes and he's just disabled. Uh, But no, it just explodes and he's just angry. Uh, They're like, ugh, we can't. We can't heal Celebi in the lake. The lake has been ruined because the forest is angry. What are we going to do about that? And then Sukun's like, hello, I have this gun. It says the word Chekhov on it. No, it's okay. There's a bunch of Pokemon around crying. That will solve everything. We learned in movie one that it kind of does sometimes. <laughs> does, does does this happen in Princess Mononoke where all the animals no. are crying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sukun purifies the water and they go, okay, now that it's like soft water instead of hard water, we can just dunk the Celebi in and it'll be fine. I, I should note, I did not catch the line early in the movie where Oak said he had that power. Really? So when Diana says it, I'm like, this is <laughs> the biggest ass pull I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I also had that and then had to be like, no, he said that earlier. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, the funniest part, the real ass pull is here. It, it did nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like they keep yeah. dunking Celebi and it's not healing it. They're like, okay, this is fine. Ash is like crying and just going, no, oh, this is great actually. I, I love this. Um, Hey, remember Barry? We can eat some berries and starts f- smushing them into his face, and they roll off and go to the water. I'm like, oh my god, oh no, Ash is having to confront death. <laughs> oh, and I'm having to watch Ash confront death. <laughs> they let this child say, Celebi is dying, Celebi is about to die. And I'm like, well, how did this get past the four kids' censors? What the actual fuck? Right? No, you get, th- you get the line of Celebi, you can't die. And then every Pokemon just starts screaming and crying. And I'm like, holy crap, this is this is really good for it. This wouldn't be happening right now, Sui Kun, if you solved the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm useless, Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Weird that that's how Sui Kun sounds when it talks. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know who could have solved this if it showed up in a movie for real? Was it Ente? It's Ente. My boy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Fake Ente has a much better movie than real Suicune. <laughs> You're so right. It is true. That's true. It, is, it is absolutely true. <laughs> we only spit facts on this podcast. <laughs> uh, the sound of the forest, the voice of the forest lifts up. Rings start shooting out. They're going to cause second impact. Um, cel- a, a whole a hell rift opens in the sky and Celebes pour out. And I'm like, okay, there are two ways this goes. There are a bunch of Celebes and this or them. Somehow this is all of the Celebes and this is a multiverse situation. And all the parallel timelines. This is the same Celebi that's like, oh, one of me died. We got to go pick him up. Yeah, this this is some end of season Doctor Who bullshit. <laughs> I was going to say, this is literally the 50th special where it's like, not nah, every doctor's got to be here. All of them, including the one we haven't seen yet. And it's just like, yeah, it's every Celebi, except you don't have different actors yep. to make it cooler. There's no stock footage. It's just fucking Celebi again. Uh, but they do this cool little float around in the circle dance and uh, Celebi gets better. That's it. Yeah, I- I'm going with the theory of there is only one Celebi and this is all the different times of it. Yeah, <laughs> I like that theory the best because it makes this more interesting. <laughs> So as they all fly back into their hell rift and the current Celebi from the current timeline and instance is perfectly fine. It does a little bit of that swimming around and flying around thing from the intro. It's skimming on the water and it's just like, oh, remember the whimsy from earlier? And out of the water explodes the Iron Mask Marauder to grab it. It's just like, I've been waiting there the whole time. (laughs) I can hold my breath real well. (laughs) Yeah, he's good at that, man. Man. That guy has lung capacity. Anyways, Ash tries to stop him, and he starts jetpacking away. <laughs> and then Ash makes the conscious decision to kill him. Yeah, Ash yeah. is like, Pikachu, end it. <laughs> and Pikachu blows up the jetpack. They are so high in the sky at this point. I don't even know. It is so far up. It's like, there's a 0% chance of survival. I don't know if you thought that through, Ash, or this is your Denji moment of the month. <laughs> I, I feel like it's just Ash going, 
My, I have more HP than you. Yeah, Ash is like, I trained for this. I can tank this hit. Mew will save me. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, Ash has fallen from greater heights than this. <laughs> in multiple movies, I feel. Yes. I feel like Ash believes in gravity. He doesn't believe in impact. No. Yeah, he's not experienced in actually hitting the ground. You know, maybe we just don't realize Ash is holding that one item that basically gives you sturdy. So it's like, yeah, if if, if I did endure a death blow, I will survive with one HP. <laughs> he's just always got escape rope on him. <laughs> and it's just like, no, tuck and roll. Just tuck and roll. It'll be fine. No, he's got the Rotom in his Pokedex from Scarlet and Violet where you will fall at full speed. And then even at a trajectory that should break your arms, it will break your fall at the very last possible second. <laughs> Thanks, Rotom. My shoulder's dislocated now, <laughs> but I'm not dead. Uh, Celebi activates and uh, hey, check that out. They're, they're going to float safely to the ground. What a delightful Iron Mask Marauder uh, lands on branches and crashes through them and just is like, oh, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Starts rolling down a hill, and lands at the bottom and has this this real mode of just. Yeah, he's got to be in excruciating pain. His mask slides off. The villagers are there. All of the Pokemon are there. He's cornered and they start silk shotting him. Right. I really thought they were going to lynch his ass. <laughs> <laughs> they are just off screen. I thought it would it would cut to black and he would just scream. And that would have been the way better scene. <laughs> Celebi starts glowing and Sam is like, oh, okay. Grab Celebi, Celebi and they, they fly off. They're going to travel back in time. Ash is like, but, but you're my friend. And Misty and Brock probably are just like, and we are... <laughs> what do you think of my bangs? Should I keep them? Like my little... No? And then Brock's just like, wow, they sure are good friends. <laughs> God. This is when we get the insert shot. It fades to black and then it fades into the FaceTime call. Uh, as far as I know, wholly inserted for the US version where they're just like talking to Oak and Ash is sad just talking about... Yeah, yeah, and... My friend disappeared, and it's very sad and stuff. And uh, then after they have the, uh, the towards the end of the call, Oak says, uh, "Don't worry, I'm sure Sammy did just fine. I'm sure he's happy in the past where he belongs." They go, "Okay," and they walk away. And then and then they go, "Wait a minute, how did he know his name was Sammy? What?" <laughs> and the Brock's like, "Oak is just so smart." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you two were good friends, and I'm observant. <laughs> yes. He just goes, wow, Professor Oak really does know everything. It's so sad. Even at that point, I'm like, we're going to do a shot where, like, Oak hooks Ash up with that guy because Oak just happens to know him because it's so fucking weird and doesn't make any sense for that to have been Oak. You know, thinking about it, they didn't need to add this extra fucking scene at all. <laughs> they literally could have just had Ash go, what's your whole name so we can find you again? And then he just goes, my name's Sam Oak. And that's it. Then Ash would know, and we can't have that. We absolutely cannot have that. Otherwise, it might interfere with the timeline of the t TV show. Oak then pulls out the sketchbook, and it's like, yeah, that's, uh-huh. That's, that's what the movie was. Yep, we get it. Yep. J Jessie's floating in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Because we just forgot about her at some point. Yeah, we did. Meowth and James swim up on a, a, a cool uh, log raft they made. And they're just like, hey, what's up? And then Tyranitar wrecks their shit. Scizor and Sneasel look look at the mountain, the lake, and they just leave. And the, as, as, as this is all wrecked, now all three members of Team Rocket are floating back facing up. Or I guess on their backs on the lake looking up. And they go, well, I guess... Team Rocket is floating away as the camera zooms out. And that's it. And then our credit song this time is Let's Sella B R A T E. See, it's like Sella B, but it's also celebrate. Yeah. You, when you have to fully explain it, <laughs> it doesn't work. I love the early 2000s. This is so stupid. <laughs> they just, they, I think they only do A T E part. No. Oh, no? No. They said specifically, they say it is Sela B R A T E. They only say it like 30 times over the course of these credits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and they even have a little part where they're like, okay, we're over. We're not over yet. Oh, man. And then they just and then they go repeat back the course it. 17 more times. Uh -huh. it's, it's, 
It's really rough. But uh, during this credit sequence, we just see some closure shots. We see Oak, uh, or rather, in Oak's lab, Tracy Sketchit warning. Sorry, I should have put that as a content warning at the beginning of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Sketchit. Hopefully I remember to put that in the description. Uh, Tracy uh, is cleaning up around the lab. Some books fall over and he finds the sketchbook and he looks at it and he looks back at Oak and then he looks at it some more and he puts it back up and then that's it. That's the movie. Puts it in a random place on the shelf. Yes. Tracy knows best. Does he? Because the next scene is him asking Oak where some books go. <laughs> Uh, that's it. Those are all my notes, except for one more note that wherein I typed in all caps, Spinarak was in this movie somewhere, I swear, <laughs> because I saw it, but couldn't remember where exactly that was. Anyways, that is... It was helping the string shot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hello, I showed up to cover you in silk, and I'm just like, ooh, Spinarak, this scene isn't horrifying because I'm mentally 10 right now. <laughs> and that is Good. Pokemon <laughs> Forever, Celebi, Voice of the Forest. Let's get to our segments. We're going to go ahead and start it off with the whimsy meter. How whimsical was this film? We're going to start with Shibuya Gato. So there was a point in this movie where, you know, Selby like bops Ash's hat and just heals Misty's knee and they're all flying and swimming and having fun. And I had an audible thought to myself of why didn't I rent this one as much as a kid as like some of the other movies, like the first and the third uh, and then it immediately cuts to all the events that lead up to Celebi dying and everybody crying about Celebi dying. And I remembered, <laughs> oh, maybe that's why. <laughs> so mm. it has some of like the peak whimsy I think we've seen up to this point, but it is also evened out by, oh no, the green onions about the fucking wilt. <laughs> so I I cannot give it higher than a four, but like if it were based purely on how high the whimsy goes, this would probably be like an eight or a nine. Um, yeah, I have to agree with Shibuya. It's kind of like, um, have you ever tried Stevia? It's like an artificial <laughs> sweetness oh, that kind of oh, oh. prepares the flavor of the rest of it. That's how it feels. These are like sprinkles of Stevia to sweeten this movie, and it just feels a little hollow and just kind of weirdly compartmentalized as the rest of it's maybe not so whimsical and sweet. I'm going to give it a three out of ten. Uh, Agra, what are you thinking? Uh, I think you guys need to learn to take a little bit of bitter with your sweetness in the tradition of the German fairy tale. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sometimes kids die, but that doesn't make a thing less whimsical. Okay. <laughs> Death is just part of whimsy. Uh, <laughs> is it? And with how like the whole middle of this film is them just doing some Totoro shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I I'm going to have to give this film. I mean, like, yes, there is an evil child murderer with, with a mech in it. And that kind of brings it down. <laughs> So really, I'm going to have to give it like like a seven. Okay. All right. Uh, Chris, sure. how are you feeling on this? Uh, Agro brought up German fairy tales. I can just say this movie would have been much better if at the end they put the Iron Masked Marauder in red hot metal shoes and made him dance <laughs> until he died. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just imagining Brock's there, and it's like he committed a crime, so all punishments are valid. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, you really shouldn't be the one saying this. Okay. <laughs> Bob, thoughts? I'm going to have to go even higher than the rest of you guys because oh. I feel like there is nothing but fake whimsy in this whole movie, and that's just as good as real whimsy. <laughs> um. <laughs> it, I don't even find the part where Selby is dying that sad. I think it's too funny because it's a, it's a draw, <laughs> rink of luck and lettuce. <laughs> um, and but, I don't buy for a second they're actually going to kill this thing. Oh, wouldn't that be good, though? Well, I mean, it's a Pokemon movie. Of course not. But like. <laughs> I feel like they don't sell nearly as well as other times. So I'm going to give this a nine. Like, there's many scenes that are just nothing but look at these Butterfree. Pretty whimsical, right? Wow. Yeah, that's, that's true. There are moments like that. Yeah, basically hit, rammed its way all the way to the top of the scale and then went down a little bit. Just a little. Just long enough for Bob to be like, I really wish this taste of this disgusting artificial sweetener would get out of my freaking mouth. Yes! <laughs> uh, that gives it a total whimsy score of 30 and an average score of 6. We're moving on to the dex check. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good is the uh, are the reps this time, you know? 
Like, uh, what's our Poke Cast looking like for you guys? How are you feeling about this? We're going to go ahead and start this one with Chris. Crow bets in this movie, so it's a 10. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would happen someday. I didn't know it would happen on the fourth one. <laughs> Bob, how are you feeling? I feel like I'm working off Chris now, but I was going to say this to begin with, I swear. <laughs> okay. Sneasel's in this movie is a main <laughs> character to 10. Bob did call that shot, and that is Bob to the core for sure. But, uh, plus, it's just fill, like it's filled out this Gen 2 lineup. It feels like everyone's there. If we hit a fourth Gen movie and a Fernape uses Thunder Punch, I'll absolutely be like, sorry, it's at 11. <laughs> <laughs> that is not just an Infernape. Uh, Agro, what are you thinking? Um, there are a lot of Pokemon in this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, one might say there, there might be too many Pokemon in this movie. <laughs> uh, every shot is chock full of everything they can cram in frame. We don't get a lot of, uh, representation of like Ash or Misty's team. We get Brock's Onyx. We, we get, uh, that, that really great second gen representation like we're talking about, but I swear to God, every time there's a shot of a bunch of Pokemon, there's like three more than should be in this biome. It's Why are there Gyarados in that lake? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to give this one an eight. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really strongly about this one. Uh, it's not my 10, but it's definitely my nine. I, once again, this had more second gens than our playthrough did of Soul <laughs> Silver. I swear to God. Because uh, of the time of day system and other things. Them trying to hide them, for example. Didn't we have to headbutt a tree, like, multiple times in order to get that, uh... Oh, I said it, Heracross. Oh, yeah, it was Heracross. I was like, was it Centrit? No. No, no, it was not Centrit. We saw Centrit on our playthrough. Okay, we're good. Uh, but yeah, no, this this is really good reps in a lot of them. In fact, uh, you know, Agro said maybe too many because they keep doing these crowd shots. But I don't care. I'm here for the buffet. And they had some really good stuff to show. Shibuya, how are you feeling? They were bold enough. No, brave enough to include fucking Parasect in those group shots. This is a nine. <laughs> when you're willing to include one of the lamest and weirdest Gen oh. 1 Pokemon, oh, slander. that's a nine. <laughs> I didn't watch the movie through this lens, and it's only now I have to look inward and, and, and reflect upon this. This next segment, before before we get to that, by the way, uh, total score 46, average 9.2 on the uh, dex check. This is pretty good dex-wise. I'm looking forward to when we will finally top this one. Uh, but the next category, gun check, <laughs> with this film have been better solved with a gun. Uh, Dr. Agra, as usual, you get opening claim, opening statement. I mean, this, this is an all-around emphatic yes. Either <laughs> any of these Pokemon hunters could have been shot by armed park services. <laughs> <laughs> or either of them could have hung out in a blind and then winged Celebi as it was flying by and <laughs> confirmed the kill. Okay. I d no, that one wouldn't solve anything. Then the time Celebes would all descend. <laughs> and the second impact. <laughs> yes, second impact. I'm sorry, Agro. We can't have it. Hmm. Uh, Bob, what are you thinking? Oh, absolutely. This is the bend of the most solvable with the gun we've seen in any of these movies. <laughs> that dude, the, the mass marauder, exposed chest at all times. <laughs> you can easily get a bullet in there. That vest ain't bulletproof. It's just got Pokeballs. <laughs> yes, the vest is only covering so much, too. It's not. <laughs> so we got that scene where he comes up on the spider mask, the uh, mech, the Iron Mask Marauder, and then Weezing shoots out the gas, and the main team's just like, oh, we got to run away. Let's run away. And they all run away, and Rock just run Brock just runs in place until they all leave. And then he comes back with a gun. <laughs> he just pulls it out, shoots the Iron Mask Marauder, and then looks at the other three, and is like, you're next, just so you know. And I also feel like Sam is like 40 years in the past. It's not safe. He would be carrying. <laughs> not like a knife or some other moderate self form of self-defense. He's carrying. He's packing heat. Yes. <laughs> Pallet town. You don't leave there without safety. Man, uh, there's a reason they're always trying to make it back to Pallet town in these movies. Seemingly uh, Shibuya. What do you think? Better solved with a gun? I think if Ash had a pistol. At any point, Iron Mask would have been dead frame one. I also think that if Sam had a pistol, uh, that first poacher would have been dead and would never have been able to tell this guy where Celebi was. So, yes. Okay. Uh, Chris? 
the villains are poachers. Of course you can solve it with a gun. <laughs> Man. This time's unanimous, guys. You could have absolutely solved this movie with a gun. <laughs> this feels like the most incredibly straightforward yes we're gonna get in this entire run but who knows maybe the only way that iron mask going up to giovanni could have ended <laughs> is just somebody drawing a gun and shooting him <laughs> fair uh we move on to our next segment the mvp most valued pokemon who do you think is really bringing it in this film <laughs> I better not hear some devil's advocates out here. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with Bob. I mean, I feel like no one's that important in this movie, but mm -hmm. Celebi is the only reason any of it happens. What a coward. He jumps through time like that. Come on. Okay. So is that an inverse most value? <laughs> yes, he's the most valuable player because he caused this whole stupid movie to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the most valued player, the guy who fell asleep at the wheel of the fucking train. <laughs> yes. Here's to Celebi, the cause of and solution to <laughs> all, of all our problems. problems. Uh, Shibuya, who's your MVP? Now, there is a Pokemon that I think could be called MVP, um, but no, it just fucks off until uh, people say that it can uh, do the bullshit that it needs to do. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to the Ursa Ring that showed them where the lake was because, like, the yeah. lake is a center point for all of this. And, like, it's just an Ursa Ring who's chill and he's just, like, Ursa Ring and then he walks. So MVP, Ursa Ring. Yeah, that's fair. Pretty good forest guide, this Ursa Ring. Didn't get lost. Went directly there through the fog. Pretty, pretty good forest guide. What if we gave the Ursa Ring a gun? <laughs> that might have that might have solved this. Uh, Chris. Could have made a difference. <laughs> Chris, uh, what, do, what do you think? Who's the MVP? I'm going to give it to Crobat. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Poor aggro. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give it to Pikachu because Pikachu was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice at the end. Look, Pikachu's so light, he wouldn't have died. Oh, you Every think the terminal velocity for Pikachu is not lethal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're all forgetting that there's tree cover that would have slowed their fall. They would have hit those branches and their velocity would have slowed. Just to be clear, it's a Pikachu, not an Amolga. <laughs> <laughs> but but maybe you're right. Maybe Pikachu can't fall fast enough to be injured by a fall from that height, especially with the branches and stuff. Yeah, just like a Rambo first blood. <laughs> Just go through a few of them and then have some broken ribs, but he's still good. <laughs> Pikachu wrapped up like Rambo. <laughs> uh, Aggro, what are you thinking now that Crobat's gone? I'm going to have to give it to my main man, Onyx, who after seasons and seasons of jobbing like a punk, has decided that he's not going to take it anymore and straight up murders that Tyranitar. Their Tyranitar was evil. I'm and sorry. then goes, uh, I'm sleepy. I, I, I don't know what I was doing. I took an Ambien. I'm not responsible for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I like how novice nominates Suicune because we're yeah, all like, yeah, no, he that, sucked. that is who I was vaguely talking about. <laughs> yeah. <Last week. laughs> yeah, no, that was that was so sad. They set it up in everything. It's like Suicune can solve the problem. Suicune's like, step aside, people. I'm going to solve this problem. It does this fancy dance on the lake to purify it, and it does nothing. Oh, no, a giant monster made of dried grass. Grass. If only there were a fire type dog. Mm. I'll even take electric because that might start a fire. <laughs> Sukun's like, hey, what's up? Doesn't somebody in this movie have a Charmeleon? Everyone just <laughs> looks at Sam. Sam staring off into the distance. <laughs> Next segment is Ash in a coma. We're going to start with Shibuya. Now, this might be controversial on this one. I don't think so i this feels more like a bad acid trip than like a coma brain coming to terms with real life issues mm. L despite the whole death thing i i just don't get the coma vibes from this movie i don't know yeah uh i also kind of don't really get coma vibes from this one uh there was a very astute statement i believe from Agro in episode three Though it may have been two, I edited both of those within 24 hours of each other. So, uh, where he said, I don't believe Ash would fabricate a story that wasn't about him. <laughs> and this seems <laughs> even more peak that there's none of this feeds back into the myth of Ash at all. 
like the second movie did. It doesn't have that fantastical of elements other than time travel. And I guess forming a giant kaiju. I'm going to have to go with no. Bob, how are you feeling on this? I'm leaning towards yes, only because there's so much fake whimsy that might come from the mind of a dying brain. So after he watched 14 different Disney VHSs and entered the coma. (laughs) Yes. His brain cobbled together the most... Well, in some Ghibli films, yes. <laughs> and some Ghibli. Well, obvi- obviously. <laughs> they climb inside and they're like, your name is Celebi! And the giant kaiju explodes. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised that didn't happen. Uh, Agra, what are you thinking? I, I'm, I'm down to the wire conflicted on this one. Mm. Be- because of exactly the reasoning I gave that you quoted. Mm-hmm. But also it, it really feels like Somebody just put Princess Mononoke on the TV while he's in his coma. <laughs> yeah. It is weird that he spends this whole movie just horning in on some other kid's magical adventure. <laughs> so I, I think I'm going to go with, with no. If, okay. if Ash was constructing this world, he wouldn't have to bully some other kid to get in on the action. Uh, Chris, what are you thinking here? It's it's tough, because like Bob said, there is so much whimsy that seems like it could come from the chemical rush that dying brings. <laughs> um, and, and, and Ash is underwater for an extended period of time. And, and, and so I'm going to say yes, because that's going to be my metric for these, is when Ash stops being stuck underwater for a long period of time in one of these movies... That's when the coma is breaking. <laughs> Stevia, it's like the rush you get while dying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up. Uh, we move on to our RCS X Machina segment. Uh, this is this is a score one to ten. Uh, 10 being the highest amount of how conveniently did this ramp up towards the end? How how out of nowhere did they do an ass pull in order to return this to the norm in order to continue the anime or the other movies? What are you thinking about this? Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Chris. Uh, it, it's hard. This one's hard to pick because you have the because um, which, which one am I supposed to go with? The Japanese version or the American version where they shoved in a scene that like hits the reset button even harder? (laughs) Hmm. I guess it to some extent it's interesting because they leave the lingering like, but no, canonically in both regions. It was it was Oak the whole time. So they've changed something about the understanding of the original world, but it's not very effectively noteworthy. (laughs) I don't feel like there's any plot holes, but there it is very much like we're wrapping everything up in this tight little package and even having Oak say, stop thinking about it, Ash. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a seven. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Agar, what are you thinking? Yeah. In, in addition to the solution to the final hurdle being, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to use time travel rules we never said we were operating under. (laughs) They followed it up with, and then Oak never told anyone that happened. Uh, That is some bullshit. Uh, I'm going to give this a nine. Wow. Uh, Bob, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm on board with Zagro here. Like, we have the time rift open to heal the main the p- Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And then just immediately, like, forget all of this ever happened. It didn't, it wasn't real. Don't, don't worry about it ever again. And Oak is just ignoring it fully. It's, it's rough. Like, this is the roughest it's been. Mm. I'm also going to give it a nine. Wow. Uh, Shibuya? I didn't really feel that way at all, mm. honestly. Like, the thing with time travel stories is that they naturally will wrap themselves up like this, uh, depending on what they're going for. And yeah, he didn't really tell anybody, but like, this was more of an excuse to just be like, oh yeah, Oak did a thing. Maybe the Celebi thing where it heals itself is like the biggest issue, but it was meant to be self-contained. It didn't really need to pull any major bullshit aside from that. I'll give it a four. Okay. Yeah, the time travel stuff doesn't actually get me. The uh, Celebes coming out of the Hell Rift, a uh, <laughs> little bit of that energy. 
I honestly don't believe he didn't tell anyone. I believe he talked to Delia and he did the most insane. I sealed this envelope back in 1974. Open it. That is a drawing of your child. I, do not open until you name your son. I, you know, watching this movie with Sam and Ash voice with the same voice, I was like, this is a stealth reveal that. Oak is just Ash's dad and will never admit it. They did sound really similar. I was convinced until we did this recording that they were the same voice actor. Yeah, so was I. I can tell you immediately that's a different VA. <laughs> Dude, at one point I li literally went, I can't believe they didn't even change their voice a little when they both back to back had to do a uh sound. <laughs> yeah, it sounded identical. Yeah, that's, that's a standard playbook. Um, I'm going to put this a little bit above average. I'm not feeling it as strong as some of the people here. I'm going to put this at a six because, yeah, it does wrap up rather neatly. It's never going to come up again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oak has traveled through time. Uh, and, uh, you know, somehow Delia kept that to herself. Um, it really is just the multiple layers of this film of how do we solve the kaiju uh just by talking to it how do we solve celebi being dead uh the hell rift and now it will immediately take uh sam back in time and we're just not going to worry about the forest or anything else because we'll just walk away and this place was never real it was a a, a night fever a a, 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 a a night terror that uh, ash is having um based on a real city in third gen a real city in hoenn so I'm going to give it a six. I'm going to give it a six, which means we're finally moving on to everyone's favorite segment. How good was the film? We need to rate it on a scale of one to 251. We're going to start with Shibuya. I don't have any funny Pokemon jokes for this one. Uh, <laughs> this movie is not my favorite, not by any means. Uh, I don't think it's the worst we've watched. Uh, I still think this is more entertaining, even with the like Stevia tier whimsy. Uh, than the second movie, personally. I'll just give it a 163. Okay. Bob? I have to look at what I've given other things because the scoring system's <laughs> insane. I'm, I'm not even trying to compare it. I'm just throwing out a number. <laughs> Bob's just having the white woman formula image going on in his brain as he's just like, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I will make that if you give me images of Bob to use for it. <laughs> God, of course, we rated the second movie on the 1 to 120 scale. <laughs> Uh, 151. Sorry, 151. Not 120 stars. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is um, better than the second movie, but it's still pretty bad. We don't see Brock or Misty do basically anything. Misty doesn't even pull out Pokemon. We have like two Ash battles. It's 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 really a lame movie in general. I'm going to give it like, uh, oh man, like I guess an 80. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's 80 out of 251. Uh, Agra, what are your thoughts? Uh, I was skeptical of it at first, but I have I have been utterly brought over uh, to the notion that Sui Kun sucks and Ante rules. <laughs> you! We got him, boys! This, this movie was not impressive. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give it a flat 99. Yeah, this is like a Sui Kun smear campaign. What is up with that? This is mind poisoning, frankly. As someone who loves Entei <laughs> and Sui Kun, this movie is just a fucking defamation campaign against Entei Sui Kun. didn't even get a real movie, and the movies are still treating him better. It's so funny. Right? I, j I legitimately... This is just barely shy of everyone gathered just being like, get out of here. You didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Suikun won't even do shit until people say, oh, yeah, Suikun, you can you can heal the, the water, right? And he's like, huh. And then he does it and then leaves after nothing happens. Yeah, he just absentmindedly looks over and goes, oh, yeah, I could do that, huh? Oak on the phone should have been like, but, but those were much exaggerated legends. <laughs> Um, I frankly think, based on our conversation here today, I like this film the least. I do not like how it's solved with Celebi. Just going, Celebi, wake up. Wake up, Celebi. Celebi, you're disassociating on the clock again. <laughs> we need you to come too. I don't like that. I don't like the hell rift just happening. I don't like the fact that 
Like, one of my favorite things in this movie is the very opening. Uh, not even the time travel stuff. Right after that, where you get that cool little portside town and Ash having a battle and needing to get to a boat. When that's the highlight of your film, we have a problem. I'm giving this a 70 out of 251. Well, Dan, I have good and bad news for you about the next movie. Oh, no. <laughs> Seaside Town. Ooh. Ooh, that's yeah. that was delightful. I, I, as I understand it, some exciting and innovative things for a Pokemon film will occur in the next film. <laughs> uh, Chris, what are you thinking? I'm going to give this a 100. Because, yeah, this is... We have the, this is the closest these have gotten to the Dragon Ball movie status. <laughs> yeah. As I start cross referencing our Mondo Cool chart and this, I'm like, okay, so which one is the closest to? Yeah, this literally brings me back to the Mondo Cools where it's the recap of Dragon Ball, but worse now. It, it feels like one of those moments where it's like, you got to bring something, you got to bring some interesting spice or flavor. You got to have something. Of your own. I I assume I like this the least of any human on Earth. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I love Celebi. I love Suicune. I did not like this film. Uh, however... I mean, I, I'm with you on that. I just... Uh -huh. We've got a lot of movies to go. <laughs> and this yeah. is like the fourth in the series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to be at this forever. But that brings our total amount of points up to 512. Once again, we'll let you figure out what that means, audience. And we'll catch you next time for Pokemon Go to the movies. Oh, wait. Didn't we were supposed to workshop the slogan? I said, I'm going to catch you all next time. I, 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 I thought Go we movie. landed on see your monster balls. Oh, yeah. See your monster balls <laughs> next time on Pokemon Go to the movies. The executive producers for this month on Gigaboo are Esme, Ely Broyles, Safe Man Fifth, Red Blade 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, The Plan, Super Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and <laughs>